the master punch card has all the possible hole locations punched out. Rows and columns are numbered. Columns A through N and rows 1 through 10 Hello again everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be an update on the WT110A RCA tube tester that uses the punch cards. There's what the punch cards look like. Has little holes punched in it. Those holes allow switches to penetrate through those holes and make contact and that's how you can test different number tubes when I got this tester it did not have a master punch card and you, you have to have that in order to make new cards for tubes that aren't included in the tester so let me show you what the master punch card looks like as you can see, the master punch card has all the possible hole locations punched out. And then the rows and columns are numbered. Columns A through N and rows 1 through 10. And when you look up a tube, you make a punch where it tells you to, like an example, A4, B7, D2, you mark those holes, so forth, all the way to the end. You punch those out. That's how you make a card for a tube that you want to test. If you watched the first two videos on restoring this tester, to make this punch card, I went through every card that was included with the tester, made a dot. After going through all of the cards, I was able to mark most of the places where the punches go, where the holes are. There were a few left that I had to fill in manually, but this is our punch card. But once I made it and, and made sure that it worked, I did three or four tubes that I wanted to test, made punch cards for them, and they all worked great. So, I made this one out of plastic. It's a more permanent solution. Won't wear out as you mark it over and over. So, that's our master punch card out of plastic. Now, here's a card I've made. And... This is the way the card sets in the tester until you use it, and then it flips over. And you can see the notch, it goes down in the tester, and that holds it in the correct position from right to left. But there's what the card looks like. I used an eighth inch punch to make the master card. And these holes I made in the card are a three sixteenths punch. Here it is here. The original cards had a 530 seconds hole. Yeah, you can't find a 530 seconds punch. I looked and looked and wasn't able to find one. Especially with a 2 inch reach. That means it has to reach in 2 inches from the edge of the card to punch all of the possible holes. So this is a 3 16 punch. Multiply that by 2, you get a 6.30 seconds instead of a 5.30 seconds, so close enough. It works fine. And here's a card stock that I bought to make the punch cards. It's the same thickness as the original cards in the tester. And to make a new card, master card on your card stock, mark around it. You do have to trim this off and then just mark each dot. Mark where the little indicator goes, the 
at the bottom and mark a circle here where that rod slides through where you can store the card in the tester. Take this punch, punch the holes out. I also used it on this end of this notch here at the bottom of the card. I punched the top of it and then just trimmed each side with a pair of scissors. And I punched that out by making several punches around to where the rod will go through that hole there. And I got a box of a hundred of those. I've used probably ten so far. So plenty left for some future tubes I want to test. And to store the new card, there's a hole we punched for the rod to slide through. And this slides back together. The rod slides through. And this rod holds all the cards tight and it is adjustable. You can add more cards, quite a few more. Now the other problem I had, I wanted to test some 4-pin, 5-pin, and 6-pin older, really old tubes, mostly used in radios. And I was able to find a chart on these old tubes that told you what locations to punch the holes in the new card, but you, you need a socket that flows into the 8-pin socket, this 8-pin octal right there. You have to have an adapter socket for the 4-pin, 5-pin, and 6-pin tubes that wires up to this socket. I thought. Well, I'll never figure that out. I wonder what connections they use, you know, from the 8-pin to a 4-pin. Well, it's really simple. The 4-pin socket uses pins 1, 2, 3, and 4, of course. And you wire them to pins 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the 8-pin socket. So you need a 4-pin jack for the tube to plug into. Then you need an 8-pin plug, plug into the 8-pin octal socket, and you just run wires from pins 1, 2, 3, and 4 to pins 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the other one. Works the same way with the 5-pin and the 6-pins. You go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, line them up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the 5-pin jack, 6-pins the same way. I'm going to be making those today, and I'll show you what they look like, and then we'll test some tubes that use a four, five, and six pin jacks. Well, I tripped down here to the woodworking shop and the car garage. Found this fitting. I think if I cut it out just a little bigger at the very top, that that socket will go right down in there. Same for this eight pin plug. I think if I make it just a little bit bigger, the center of it, I think it'll slide down in there. I got my step bit. I'm going to try this. I'm going to do both sides. Well, that worked out pretty well. Uh, the only thing, I could only make one. It had to be, I did cut it down, but it wasn't enough to make two. But I think we're getting where we need to be. And the wires run between them. And this one is the five pin because I have a five pin tube down here in the basement. I'm easy to get to, so I did it first. So let's let's plug it up, make sure it works, and then we'll figure out how to 
fasten the ends. This is a number 36 tube, and I, this is a card I made for it. So we're plugged up. Turn it on. Well, we got a filament. And we got a meter. That adapter works. And just holding it together, it's short enough to where we can still get the cap lead on. That new socket really grabbed that tube good, so I need to come up with a way of fastening this where it's tight. Uh, glue might work. Well, with a little work with the Dremel tool, we got a good tight fit on that side there. And the plug side, I decided on super glue. It's got masking tape to hold them together until it dries good. We'll try that. If it seems loose or doesn't do right, then I'll figure out something different. While we're waiting on that one to dry, I think I found even a better solution for the second one. This is closet rod material. It's metal. Uh, I like the plastic part of that. Because no chance of it shorting anything out inside. But the way these are designed, if I run the insulation of the wire all the way down to the where it goes through the pin, there's nothing's going to short out there. And the metal fits around the outer ring and it fits tight. This end also fits tight enough, and I can just crimp this a little, and that should snap in and stay there. And I can super glue it too. So I'm going to go down to the shop and cut another one out of this, and we'll get adapter, the four pin adapter completed. All right, have it clanked in my metal cutting bandsaw. I had this old bandsaw for 35 years. Still works fine. Now we're going to cut one more while we're down here. Have the four pin wired up and that's an 80 tube i have a old radio i'm going to restore so let's see what we get i see a filament and i see a reading so let's get this socket put together while i don't think this metal sleeve would ever short out against that because it centers, the, the jack centers in the sleeve. I'm going to put some tape just around all the connections, wrap it up really good. Uh, I did a little crimping there on that top edge where the, the socket fits in. And I had to drive the sleeve onto the socket after doing that, so I think we're good and tight. Uh, the plug fit really tight. I had to snap it in. I put some super glue under it before I snapped it in. All right, here's a six pin socket. Uh, it is ceramic. So let's test it and make sure it works. We're connected pins one through six on the plug and one through six on the socket. 
All right, this is a number 57 tube, and here's a 57 card that I made. Good filament. And we're testing up in the good. We'll just do the super glue and pop this in. And let me look at this in. I'll figure out what I can do there. Like I did on the four pin socket with a metal sleeve. I'll wrap some tape around these connections. Just a little super glue around this eight pin plug a little bit on the plastic this tape around there protect those connections and I just twist it to put it in just going around and crimping this and going out to make it larger. See if that works. Much better. Now we can super glue all the way around that socket, that edge right there. And that should hold. Put a little band of tape around here, mainly just for looks, to cover up that bent metal where I bent that out for a crimp. Now let's try it one more time. Film it's working, and the tube tests good. And even though pins one and six are larger jacks here, I went ahead and marked them one and six. And that's how you make four, five, and six pin old style tube adapter to use on this RCA tube tester. See you next time. We hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you did, how about giving us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.